It is another interesting edition of Candy Talk. Today we get to interact with Martin Moyo, aka Neslong Baby. <laughs> Daddy Long. Hey, what's How good? What's good? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's yeah. good to have you on Candy Talk. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, tell us more about yourself. Who is Neslong? Well, Neslong, as you actually introduced me, um, I go by the name of Martin Moyo. I'm a, I'm a rapper, producer, songwriter, uh, talent coach. What else? And an entrepreneur. Yeah, basically, yeah. Right, that's, that's, what, that's who Neslong is. Wow. You recently mm. posted a photo about Cheesy at East Point, Kawata in 2012. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people knew Neslong then. Fast forward to 2021, Neslong is a household name. Yeah. How uh, has been this musical journey for you? Well, I must say, um, Rome wasn't built in one day. But uh, some, fortunately for other people, their <laughs> Rome is built in one day. And for some, it breaks in a few days. And for some, it's solid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. But for me, um, it's been quite a journey. And um, as much as I really wanted to be in the spotlight, I never at any time tried to rush anything or try to, to, force, to force my way to the, to the spotlight. I, I worked a lot in the background of quite a lot of talents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some renowned names that are celebrated here in Zambia. And I actually had to learn, I actually had to learn on how to go about the industry or how to go about some things. Yeah, definitely the lessons might have, might have, been, um, might have been different. And what I've come to understand now that I'm, I am the one in the spotlight, yeah. I'm experiencing something different. So basically, I must say I, have, I, I learned a lot and I'm still learning to actually better and grow my art. Wow. And um, mm -hmm. back to the photo, mm -hmm. um, I was just trying to inspire a whole lot of artists out there who, who see <laughs> things happening right now. Yeah, okay. I'm, not, I'm not the biggest artist in the country. I'm not the most yeah. well-to-do, but I must say I'm the most comfortable. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm, I'm content with what I have, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and where I am mm -hmm. right now, because that's not, I'm not where I am where, like, compared to where I was two years ago. Okay. In 2012, mm -hmm. uh, I remember that night very well. Um, we were like opening acts for an artist I can't disclose. Yeah, and we, we were called on stage to perform. And nobody came close to the stage. We performed our lungs out. People were just walking past us. The only people that watched us from the side, from the backstage, were the people that we went there with. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just having set stage on that night, for me, was an achievement with my friend Cheesy. Yeah. Um, he kind of went slow with the music because of work and whatnot. Yeah, we had a crew called Swagana Machiki, which actually I usually chant okay. most of the times. Yeah, yeah um, we were like the four of us. Like everybody else is just doing, they're in other sectors of business and well, yeah, they're, they're very successful at whatever they're doing. Yeah, but I'm the only one who stayed back and said, I'm going to push this until I make it happen. They're all still my boys. We hang out. They're like my closest friends. Yeah. I felt so good to be on that stage that night. But coming to think of it now, when I look back at that, I was like, I really, I'm still happy that I did that because I have never been, that, I've never had a moment where I will go on stage and I don't like it there because I love what I do. I performed for an empty crowd and I enjoyed it because I was on stage, I was, perf I was, I was performing, I was, I, was, I was exercising my art, you know what I mean? Yeah, so... Right now, fast forward to 2021, I must say it's God's grace that we're here, but at the end of the day, we never take anything for granted. Just because we know God is going to bless us doesn't mean we have to go to sleep and 
just wait for, for miracles to happen overnight and things just fall in place without actually working towards the, our goals, you know what I mean? Yeah. So inspiration. Um, as an artist, obviously the stage uh, is your office. Yep. Yeah. How has it been going, you know, uh, for you uh, now that gatherings have been cancelled? No, actually, uh, sorry, yeah. the, <laughs> the stage is not our office. Okay. It's a department it's a of department. our office. Okay, great. <laughs> Thanks for the correction. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So how has it been going for you, uh, you know, uh, due to COVID-19? And uh, now that, uh, uh, you know, gatherings have been, uh, you know, limited um i must say it's all about it's all about being innovative with whatever you're served with you know what you're given lemons you make lemonade you know what i mean um when covid came to when covid got to zambia i was like okay now we're a bit messed up because we're not gonna have gigs and whatnot and i had lined up like I think that was like 12 events in six different provinces. Okay. Yeah, because I was supposed to do like a country tour for my EP at the time. Yeah. yeah. And before I even did my first tour, COVID came and we had to be, we had to be shut down. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when I went back to my drawing board, I was like, okay, this music is my, is my everything. And I know out there the stage is not the only thing that will, can feed me. I had to think through things and find other ways, other avenues of actually making money as an artist. And I started sending out, me and my team started sending out proposals to corporate companies and whatnot. This is something that we used to do even before, okay. you know what I mean? Yeah. But this time we had to do it on, like on a stronger level and actually do a little bit of rebranding to be accepted by the corporates as well, okay. you know what I mean? Wow. And we pushed most of those things and now we, I actually made some, some good money off that. Okay. And I must say 20, 2020 was quite a successful year for me, okay. musically and financially, if I may put it that way. Yeah, because um, I learned to survive away from stage. It took COVID to take away stage for me to know that, no, you can actually survive without stage. And now, uh, even the time, like late last year, when we had a little bit of an opening here and there, I felt like it's not, necess it's not really necessary for me to be on every stage if they don't pay me the, the right amount. Because I know that the stage is not the only place where I'm going to make my money from. Okay, you know great. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So in May last year, you released an album, an AP album called Spookies. Yeah. Um, some of your fans would like to know what Nays has been up to since. Are we expecting any album or any new single? Well, um, expect a lot of new music this year, okay. but uh, I can't promise an album this year. Um, I'm focusing more on uh, growing myself a little bit more becoming more influential than I am. And uh, when I hit my target, that's when I feel like the content I have to put in a compilation of an album will be ready to be put out. When I hit my, my, the target of my influence and what, and what I'm trying to do right now, that's when I feel I will be ready to actually put out the type of compilation that I'm looking at putting out next. You know what I mean? Yeah. I must thank everybody out there for who bought and streamed and supported me on my EP release last year. Okay. Yeah, because of COVID, I actually did an online release. I had like a small gathering. I invited a couple of artists and the streams were to the roof. You know what I mean? A couple of corporate companies came on board to sponsor and it was a success. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, I must say, even up to now, I have, I've, I've been putting out music from that compilation and people are still loving it. All right. Yeah. Uh, sorry just uh, to stop you there. Uh, let's just change the location uh, due to the rains. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, uh, otherwise, the live is still on. Okay. We're still live. We're still live. We're still live. <laughs>
Um, is this my glass? Oh, it's this one. <laughs> ah, no pressure, no pressure, no pressure. Jealous. Yeah. I think this. That's it. Yeah, so uh, basically, um, I was saying the the project was a success. Like I sold, um, I sold a lot of copies. <laughs> I sold a lot of copies. I made like I made like forty thousand kwacha in like two weeks, offsetting hard copies. Okay. Yeah, I physically uh, um, delivered the copies. Personally, I went round, I, 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 I put my number out there and I told people I'm going to deliver. And I, must, I made like 40K. Mm, not really that some, like some of that money was from like 100 kwacha sale of each CD. Yeah. There were some people that would buy my CD for like a thousand just to support. You know what I mean? They were like, you know what, it's, it's, it's been a tough period. So how, give me the CD for like a thousand and within two weeks, I made a proper 40K. Oh. Yeah, and it was really a success. And um, I really appreciate the fact that even, even after it, after it's almost a year now since the compilation has been out, the love for the music on the compilation is still fresh. I see tweets, I see people talking about the music on social media. People um, refer to me quoting my lines in some of the music in, on, on that compilation, you know? Yeah, and it's so motivating and uplifting for me to just work hard and keep giving my, my people more great music. You know what I mean? Yeah. You did uh, a hit song titled W. Uh, is yeah. it from the same... Uh, yeah, it's also album. from it's also yes. part of the compilation. And you featured Dead Zambia. Yeah. May so rest in peace. Yeah. So how is the response from your fans to uh, the track? Right now, it's actually the song that I'm promoting and pushing. Um, the response and the love from the people is really overwhelming, and um, I'm so grateful. Uh, basically, this is one of the projects that simply tells like a hustle story, like a real life hustle story for me. The time, um, there was a time early last year when I was traveling out of town and then I challenged Stash while I was waiting for my transport to come and pick me up and whatnot. I challenged Mr. Stash to say, hey, I'm going out of town. Back in the day, you'd make me beats in 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Why don't you make me something right now to go and work on while I'm away? He just closed off everything he was doing and started making that beat and he made it in like 15 minutes. Like the skeleton of the beat in 15 minutes. And I was like, oh. I was like, even ex at the time the people who were picking me up got to the studio, he actually exported it and told me, I want a song when you get back. I was so challenged on my way to Livingstone. I was writing the whole time. I wrote 
I wrote the hook and I wrote the first verse on my way to Livingstone. On my way back from Livingstone, I wrote the other verse. When I immediately I got back, we were in the studio with him, recorded it. It was dope, and I was like, I'm th I think it's lacking a little bit of backing vocals here and there. So I called Dave to come through to the studio. I just need a little bit of backing vocals yeah. here and here. And, and when he came, <laughs> I just stepped out of the studio for a little bit. I found he had laid the whole verse. <laughs> okay. wow. And I was like, bruh, I, yeah. I, yeah. like, I only called you for, for uh, some backing. That no, 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 this year I'm not playing around. If you call me on your song, I'm owning it. <laughs> and I was like, anyway, whatever it is, we'll keep it like that. And that's how we came up with that song. It took like two to three days for Stash to mix and master, structure it properly. We mastered it and it was a perfect song, which is um, my current single right now. And the response from the people over the song is so overwhelming. I actually had to put it out as a single a year after because as we were getting into this year, people had a lot of expectations. They thought maybe even at the start of this year, COVID would be gone. You know, like 31st of December, yeah. crossing a chain new year, COVID dear seed. <laughs> but only to be hit with a bigger job, a bigger wave of COVID. You know what I mean? So um, I needed to put out a song that would inspire people, make them believe that things are going to be better and make them focus, help them focus on what's relevant to survive during this period than always complain and looking down on themselves or um, directing their energies towards people who are trying to bring them down. It's a very sensitive period, I think, and I thought this is a song that can, people will encourage people to actually stay ahead of their game and stay focused. You know what I mean? Yeah. You did show off a tattoo of Dave Zambia, crafted on your arm, shared it with the fans across uh, social media platforms yeah. with an emotional caption. How deep was your relationship with uh, Dave? Dave was like a young brother to me. Um, I remember when, when he came through to, to join our camp, it was me, it was just me, um, my clique, Swagana Machiki at the time, with Cheesy Wonder Boy, Dope, and, uh, and them. Um, he, he just, he, he used to play guitar, like he used to play guitar a lot. So um, there was a time he came through and I was there and he was playing his guitar, there was no power that day. So he was playing his guitar, like singing with, um, I think there's another friend of his, I just can't remember his name. And then when I, f I found them in the studio, and I was like, I was asking Stasha, who's this boy? No, he's Dave, what, 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 what. Actually, he used to call himself D Black at the time. <laughs> he, used to call, he used to call himself D Black. No, he's, he's David, he calls himself D Black and what, not, not, not. This guy is an amazing talent. I think, I actually talked to him. How about to join our camp? We work together. We we make music together. I was like, ah, no, no problem, big man. Me, this is this is what I love to do. I was like, ah, oh, oh, cool. He actually left his parents' house and moved into our little space where me and Stash and Bobby were staying in. You know what I mean? Yeah. He moved in with us, and we used to make music like 24/7. They used to stay up every night with Stash making music. If it's not him in the studio, it has to be me or, or Bobby, or maybe sometimes it would be like all of us in one place, just constantly making, making music. And his, his vocals, like from way back, have always been amazing. But he had to grow his writing, his, his, his composing skills over time. And then when he actually had the grip of it, Jesus Christ. <laughs> he just Something took else. he just took the country by storm. Yeah, and uh, he's somebody who I really considered like a young brother to me. I used to fight them a lot with stash. I used to I used to give them a tough time trying to keep them on track. You know what I mean? Until it got to a point whereby I felt they were like they were, they were big boys they could handle themselves. But still, even when I noticed something that they're doing, they're not doing right, I never 
I never allowed them to to misbehave in any sort of way. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah and uh, his death was like a very huge blow for me personally. It was a very huge blow because even in as much as I was focusing on my career at the time, I was focusing on growing myself and he was doing his thing as well. We were all doing our own thing, but still a, still a team. I felt like there's, there was so much that we didn't do. You know what I mean? And then because of the fact that we always take advantage of the, per, of the person when they are around, we know uh, I can call him up anytime he'll come through. But immediately that person is taken away. You just come to realize what you've just lost. You know what I mean? I lost a brother, I lost a young brother in him, and may he so rest in peace. He may be dead, but to keep his legacy alive through this music and through any movement necessary that we can. Yeah. You went with so many big artists like Chef 187, Bob East and Slam T. Yeah. Um, what is your best collaboration? Mm. I must say, I don't have a personal favorite <laughs> because each and every song I, I brought every guy on is unique from the other one. You know what I mean? I, I have my own genre, if I may put it that way. It's generally uh, dance music and whatnot, and it's hip hop. I love to fuse hip hop and, and dance music together. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm just in my own genre. You know what I mean? And um, every time I create a new song, I've done a whole lot of collaborations and I must say every time I'm, I'm working on a song, even in as much as I finish a song by myself, I always try to listen, listen through it perfectly and try to understand what is it that is missing to make it a big song and like a complete project. That's where instances like all these collaborations came about and the fact that all these people came on board with their all their input like wholeheartedly the results have always turned out to be like the songs have always turned out to be major bangers you know what I mean because um, the energy that they bring onto the song is that of is that of which they would put on their own you know what I mean and um, I'm really grateful for their support these people have been have been really really supportive towards my career and yeah they have really supplemented my career so much and I'm, I'm really grateful. Which is your which one is your favorite song between Van Damme and Daikodin? <laughs> <laughs> and why? Uh, <laughs> that's like asking me which one of my kids is my favorite. Yes. I have two kids, I love them both. <laughs> I love them both. There's, yeah. Yes. I love them both. I know. I know their abilities. I know their capabilities, and so applies to those two songs that you've just mentioned. They are all. They're two different songs. They're. They are great in their own lane, in their own way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. I love all my kids. <laughs> wow, that's great. Is it true? That drifter track invited you to a boxing match, and how did it go? <laughs> <laughs> I saw a tweet. I won't lie. I saw a tweet where he was inviting me to a boxing match. Eish. I love his courage. <laughs> Calling me out for something like that. I love his courage. But unfortunately, that's something that I couldn't take up. You know what I mean? I love him gathering his guts to actually call me out for a book. So much. <laughs> He's really confident. He's really confident. But ish, I don't know what would have happened to him. <laughs> it wasn't going to end well. <laughs>
<laughs> so in a controversial song I was li listening to uh, called My Diary. Okay. Uh, you said something like Minale Kakusobira na Wafana Monga Rona Drifter. Like what really happened between the two of you? Well, that is something that I, <laughs> right now, I don't like to talk about because it's in the past and I've moved on and I just don't coexist with him. He's like in his own lane, I'm in my own lane. You know what I mean? Yeah. How do you handle beef? Beef? Uh, it depends on which part of the cow it comes from. I sometimes roast it, sometimes I boil it. <laughs> But at the end of the day, I eat it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, basically, uh, no one should come at me and expect me to lose. Nah. <laughs> There's too much competition in the uh, music industry, in the Zambian music industry. And uh, I know you know that. Yeah. yeah. How do you rate your music? It's great music. It's better than most. <laughs> well, basically, I for one, I do not categorize myself among a certain type of artist or a certain group of, a certain type of music that everybody's doing. Like I told you, I have my own genre. Every time I put out a song, it's when people start putting out music like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I set the trends. People follow. So, um, where competition is concerned, I think the only competition I have is myself. I never generalize myself in a group of artists. No, I don't do group assignments. <laughs> you are a winning hip hop artist. What is your biggest achievement? Um, I have two awards to my name, yeah, both from 2018, Van Damme. Uh, I scooped uh, Best Collaboration. Wait. Is it Best Collaboration? <laughs> no, Best Hip Hop <laughs> and Best Newcomer. Yeah, but I was nominated in four categories, Song of the Year, that was Song of the Year and uh, Best Collaboration as well. And from the four nominations, I scooped two awards. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm sitting on two awards right now. Where do you, you know, who do you draw inspiration? Who do you look up to in this lane? Um, I look up to my fans. Yeah. The day-to-day -day lives that everybody goes, ha that, like, goes through is what inspires my music, you know? It may be silly music sometimes, it may be booty music, <laughs> but well, booty is alive. So, <laughs> um, I, thank you, I draw my inspiration from our day-to-day -day lives and I always try to create concepts, different concepts of a certain story, like if I hear a certain situation is happening, I try to, to target a different side of it. I try to, ta to target, target like a different side of the story and like to what people expect it to be. You know what I mean? Love. Love is like a basic topic in music. You need to attack uh, topics of love that people are afraid to speak about when they are actually there. That's that's where I come in. That's my line of thought. You know what I mean? Basically, even other just other other topics. That's how I attack my 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 concepts. Okay. Yeah. Anyone anyway, for upcoming artists out there who look up to you? Well, um, if they look up to me, they're looking up to the right person because they are going to make it. Nobody, nobody is gonna be a Nez Long fan and be a loser, nah. <laughs> but yeah, basically, um, if somebody follows my story and they follow my footsteps, 
definitely they are going to have to divert and find their own paths. But most importantly, they should know that nothing comes easy. Uh, most people will tell you probably I blew up because I'm, a, I'm affiliated to XYZ. I blew up because I had cheated and cheated on my music. But I mean, I wasn't the only one that did those collaborations. I'm not the only one who's been affiliated to these labels. But who made it? I did. That would tell you that I pushed my music, I pushed my art. And it's, 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 they should take it upon themselves to know that regardless of having somebody who you look up to, always find your own path. Look up to somebody for inspiration, but always work towards finding your own path and growing yourself. Invest more time in learning the type of person you are. Even if you are, you are crazy, invest more time in learning in how, how crazy you are. You know what I mean? There's a lot of crazy people who are making money off being crazy. <laughs> so if you invest more time in just knowing what you're good at and actually growing it and learning how it can put you out there, how it can put you in the spotlight, how it can make you some money, invest more time in that. It's not going to come on a silver plate. People will pick you up sometimes, keep you under their wing, but if you don't have direction of your own, you will, you will always be an egg under their wing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Uh, before you go, Neslo, um, uh, I'm going to give you an exercise. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Were you good at uh, structure in English? <laughs> <laughs> Where you have to complete the sentence. And it is ungu nachi zivida mafium. So okay. So this is an exercise for you. Uh -huh. Complete the sentence. I never leave home without a dash. I never leave home without a. Am I supposed to be telling you that I don't leave home without? <laughs> Um, well, I never leave home without uh, hand sanitizer and a face mask. Actually, that's a hundred percent. Okay, question two before you go. What are the four COVID-19 rules? Um, mask up, maintain social distance, sanitize. Uh, what's the fourth one? <laughs> So, two out of... <laughs> no, it's three. Three, bruh. <laughs> it's three. And those are the only right. three. Which other one is there? Uh, sorry, sorry. Mask up, mm -hmm. sanitize, maintain social distance. Yeah. There's a fourth one. Yes, there's a fourth one. <laughs> Alright, you have done great. Thank you. <laughs> it was good to have you on Candid Talk and I'm looking forward to having you next time. Thank you very much. Whenever you need me, just call me. All right, great. And thanks to everybody that tuned in to watch. We love ya. Wow. This has been Candy Talk, and uh, today we have been interacting with uh, uh, Martin Moyo, aka Neslong Baby. <laughs> See you next time. Bus. <laughs> <laughs>